Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. The Curse of Oak Island Scientific data narrows location of treasure to the new baby blob. The Curse of Oak Island returned last night to reveal the team has narrowed down the area, known as the blob, where they need to look for the treasure by the garden shaft. This week's episode saw Ian Spooner back in the war room. Marty Legina couldn't hide his excitement and impatience about hearing the geoscientists' results on the data from the recent water samples. The geoscientist almost always has good news for the team, and Marty left him in no doubt that the pressure was on for him to deliver again. Ian had a selection of graphs, all indicating that he had narrowed down the area of the blob. This means the team now has a much smaller area to look in for the large concentration of gold that is thought to be buried near the garden shaft. Marty christened this new area the Baby Blob. The Baby Blob is a much more manageable area of only 20 feet by 20 feet and is buried between 80 and 120 feet underground. It lies just outside of the garden shaft. However, Ian had more intriguing news. He and his colleague uncovered the signatures of other metals, besides gold, in the baby blob. These metals included copper, zinc, and tin, and the presence of these three metals also suggests the presence of brass and bronze. Copper and zinc combine to make brass, and copper and tin give you bronze. These precious metal combinations are significant because they suggest a concentration of different types of objects or treasure buried in the baby blob. Gary Drayton pointed out that all these metals would be found with a real treasure hall. Frankly, the fellowship and the viewers should be wary of being too excited. Over the last few years, the team has already drilled plenty of times into the blob area and has even drilled six times into the baby blob each time finding nothing of real value. The guys have been drilling in this area for the past couple of weeks, and last night they placed the borehole drill, BN 9.5, over the baby blob, and still, they hit nothing. There was disappointment etched on their faces, but they tried to remain upbeat. The soil was loose in places, indicating they could be close to something. It is important to remember that it is still quite a wide area, and perhaps they just missed the treasure by inches. In other news, the Dumas Mining Company has now excavated and rehabilitated 44 feet of the garden shaft. Rick Legina and Scott Barlow even got to don some hard hats and go check it out. Rick was super excited to realize his childhood dream of exploring under the surface. The good news is Dumas only have to dig another 40 to 50 feet, and then they'll be able to tunnel into the baby blob itself, which could finally bring the 200-year-old secret of Oak Island to a close. Meanwhile, on Lot 26, Gary and Jack Begley were dancing for joy after they uncovered what appears to be a brooch. The team was super excited to discover an actual piece of jewelry. The breach will need to undergo some rigorous testing and analysis before it can be determined how old the object is and what it's made of. The guys were able to examine it using a CT scanner, but they will need an XRF analysis to learn more. In one final area of note, the team brought in historian Terry DeVoe to examine the mysterious ancient well on Lot 26. Regular viewers will remember Terry as the guy who dated the stone roadway by the swamp to 500 years old and suggested it had been built by the Portuguese. Terry didn't have a whole lot to say about the well, but he did note its similarity to a well in New Ross, Nova Scotia, about 20 miles away from Oak Island. The team visited the well at New Ross in 2016 where they discovered markings that connected the area to the Templar Knights. All this just adds to the mystery of the well.